questions, um, let's begin with prayer. Let's pray. Glorious God, it is a beautiful Sunday, Sunday, sunny Sunday morning. We bless you for, I am um, sort of overwhelmed this morning, Lord, to see how the wonders of what you have enabled people to do, that is to put technology together so that we could hold simultaneous drive-in and Zoom worship is just amazing. God, and you are even more amazing than that technology. For you are the one who endowed us with those abilities and with the capabilities. So we bless you and praise you this morning as we come to worship on this Sunday morning, on this Lord's Day. And we look to you for your Holy Spirit, who we uh, cherish and we know will help each of us as we worship from afar and together to worship you rightly to worship you with love and praise, to worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning. Please join me in our unison call to worship. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God's creation was a process starting with the formless mass and darkness. The wind from God swept over the face of the waters. The wind from God was moving and preparing the way for change. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. All the details of this process were illuminated as God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. We praise you, God, for creating and sustaining your creation by your spirit and word. Please join us in our hymn of praise, number 666. me in our unison prayer of confession. Holy God, who is light in our darkness, we confess at times we forget to wonder at the mystery of you speaking creation in our world and in us. We get so busy with our own concerns, we ignore the wonder of the mystery of you speaking life through Jesus and your spirit in us. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and all their host by breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle. He put the deeps in storehouses. Let all of the earth fear the Lord. 
let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and invited to live into the mystery of the word and spirit dwelling in us. Our hymn now is our hymn of meditation, Breathe On Me, Breath of God. And, and I'm sorry about the first hymn. I didn't know I had to keep my microphone on, so I'll keep it on this time. Let us pray. Holy God, thank you that through Jesus you are bringing restoration to our world. May we feel your spirit, spirit's breath blowing new life into us today as we listen to your word and remember the waters of baptism. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from Acts 19, and I'm going to be reading verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture this morning is from Mark, chapter 1. Verses 1 through, uh, 1 through 11. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. 
and a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Amen. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of God's holy word. Well, what's your baptism story? Many of us may not even remember being baptized. Some might have been baptized when they were so little. Maybe you were baptized by water dripping on your head at a font, or maybe you were immersed in a pool or a lake or a baptismal tank like I was. I wish we had time to share those stories this morning. If you are in Zoom, you do have a way you could share. At the bottom of your Zoom um, software, there's something called chat. And you can type into that. If you click on it, you can type in your story of baptism. And we could all um, learn a little bit more about each other's baptisms. If you're at drive-in, however, it's not quite as simple. But you could check in with each other and say, just how were you baptized when you have time to visit? In our passage from Acts that we heard, thank you, Jessica, about some disciples in Ephesus who had been baptized, we find that they only had a mere inkling of what it meant to be a disciple, for they had only had the baptism by John, which was the baptism of repentance. They didn't know the rest of the story. Thankfully, Paul met with them and invited them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And then he laid hands on them, and they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit from Jesus. What's interesting about these two stories is that Jesus would have been baptized in the baptism of repentance as well, because he was also baptized by John. I'm not sure we always think about that, but that was the same baptism he had. And according to Morna Hooker and her commentary on Mark, she says, if John's baptism was intended to be the preparation for the new age, the rite which gathered people together a holy people of God who affirmed in this act of committal that they were ready for his coming. They showed they were looking for the kingdom of God. End of quote. She then suggests that Jesus joined with the people in this act of being baptized and welcoming of the kingdom of God. And in doing so, as we heard in Mark's gospel, God and the Holy Spirit showed up too. It may seem strange to us that these disciples in Ephesus were baptized again by Paul, since we as Presbyterians believe in one baptism. No need to redo if you've been baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But the baptism of repentance didn't include the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, at least as far as we can tell. Hence the reason for them to have another baptism. I think baptism is itself a great mystery. As I've gone through ministry through the years now, people have talked to me, more than one have talked to me about baptism. And they haven't felt like their baptism was effective. They sinned after their baptism or their lives weren't perfect after their baptism. I've heard of a woman, um, actually it was when I was in seminary, who was dying of cancer. And she kept asking pastors to come and baptize her again and again and again. Maybe people wonder, like this woman did, if their baptism really did anything for them. Or maybe they just aren't aware or don't understand the gift that baptism is for us, as I discussed with the children today. John Calvin, um, a reformed, well-known reformed theologian, wrote about baptism and the gift of the Holy Spirit, and he offers the following benefits or reasons for being baptized. In case you were wondering why you should be baptized, John Calvin wants to give you a few reasons. Baptism is our admission to the fellowship of the church. Baptism engrafts us into Christ. It's like those wild shoots that Paul talks about that are engrafted in. That's us when we're baptized. Baptism is, baptism is our admission into the fellowship of the church. Baptism helps us become children of God. Once we're baptized, we are now considered children of God. Baptisms help us grow in our faith in God. Baptism removes our sin because we die with Christ in the water and are made alive to righteousness in life in Christ when we come out of the water. 
This death to sin is for our whole lives, Calvin says. Since Jesus consecrated and sanctified baptism in his own body, when we are baptized, we are consecrated and sanctified, united and have fellowship with Christ through our baptism in him. And that makes us partakers of all his blessings. We put on Christ through our baptism. End of quote. Did you notice that scripture? Paul says, and when he baptized them, they were baptized in, or when, when Acts was written, it would be Luke actually that's writing, that when they were baptized, they were baptized in the name of Jesus only. Well, Calvin wants us to know about that too. So he has a commentary. His commentary also addresses that scripture. Hence, it is strange, he says, that the apostles are said to have baptized in the name of Christ though they were enjoined to baptize in the name of the Father and Spirit also. For all the divine gifts held forth in baptism are found in Christ alone. And yet he who baptizes into Christ cannot, but at the same time invoke the name of the Father and the Spirit. For we are cleansed by his blood just because our gracious Father of his incomparable mercy, willing to receive us into favor, appointed him mediator to effect our recon reconciliation with himself. Regeneration we obtain from his death and resurrection only. When sanctified by his spirit, we are imbued with a new and spiritual nature. End of quote. Baptism then not only sanctifies us in Christ, we are blessed as Jesus was with the gift of baptism of the Holy Spirit. Calvin, along with his fellow reformer, Martin Luther, our sure one and only baptism is sufficient for our whole lives. For this to have meaning in our lives, maybe we would do well to emulate Martin Luther, the great reformer and German priest. Because Martin Luther used to put his head, hands on his head and he would say, I am baptized. I am baptized. The only way to drive away the devil is through faith in Christ and by saying, I am baptized and I am a Christian. Baptism signifies that the old creature in us is drowned and has died daily through repentance and daily a new person comes forth, arises to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As a young person, I was baptized Maybe some of you were too. I was 12. And I was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Fully immersed, though, in the Baptist church, there was a big tank up in the sanctuary, and I got to wade into that water and be baptized. But at that time, I really didn't have a sense of Jesus' love or the presence of the Holy Spirit. I went many years feeling I was not very successful in being a Christian. I couldn't figure out why it was so hard. And there were some years where worship in a church really didn't figure into my life. But finally, and thankfully, God put people in my path and they helped me find church again and realize that I needed to reaffirm my faith in Jesus and essentially my baptism and become acquainted with the Holy Spirit. It was then that this mysterious joy and love began to bubble up in my heart and in my life. I gradually learned to trust God more and more and more and received what I could not do for myself, the love and life of Christ Jesus through the Holy Spirit. If we are feeling overwhelmed today or maybe other days, maybe this week, overwhelmed by our own sinfulness or our failures, even after we, you know, remember our baptism, we can remember that we need to remember daily. <laughs> it, it's our daily remembering of our baptism that will help us as we do, as Jesus suggests, take up his cross and follow him. Therefore, let us realize that the Holy Spirit, who was present at our baptism, as he was at Jesus' baptism, is present with us today and comes to regenerate us, to give us new life each time we confess 
our need for him and call on Jesus' name. Those disciples that had been taught and baptized by Apollos, that's who had baptized him with the baptism of John in Ephesus, they both, they and Apollos himself, needed not just to prepare to know Jesus, they needed to been, be baptized as Jesus' disciples. Repentance isn't enough if we don't know the one who died for our sins. We need Jesus, and we need to be baptized in Jesus. Because as I told the children, we can't baptize ourselves, and we can't see, receive new life on our own. Paul wanted them and us to become fully Christ's disciples. He knew they needed rebirth to die and be reborn in the water and the spirit. So he baptized them in Jesus and prayed over them, believing Jesus for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the best part is when we trust Jesus, we will find the Holy Spirit and Father God are with us as well. As I alluded to, this has been a very troubling and difficult week. I wondered as I prepared this sermon if this is what God really wanted me to talk about today. And then I realized that remembering our baptisms as we remember Jesus' baptism is what maybe what we needed the most. We need rebirth to know that when we confess our sins and even when we hold up the sins of others and the sins of our world and confess those, God is faithful and promises that we have Jesus. We are forgiven. We are loved forever. We can know again today that we have been given the gift of being children of God in Jesus Christ. We are set free from all the sins that have tried to beset us and entangle us because we are forever given the gift of and sealed with the Holy Spirit. This morning, as we prepare to move into prayer, I'm going to invite each of us in my prayer to lay our hands on our head like Martin Luther. I know that may seem kind of silly, but there is something that about physically touching our own head, where the water poured or was splashed, where our head went under the water, that helps connect us to the one who is our baptism, who is who we were joined with and died with and rose to in his name, Jesus. In this way, through prayer and laying our hands on our heads, we will remember our baptism, even if we don't have a physical memory. And if you haven't been baptized, this is a fine time to tell Jesus um, what your thoughts are about baptism and if you'd like to be baptized. We very much need Jesus today in order to be his disciples. We need him to be in us and us in him. And we need Jesus to bring anoint and keep pouring his mighty, life-giving, love-stirring Holy Spirit in us. For where Jesus is, the Father and the Holy Spirit are there as well. Let us pray. Lord God, our Father, we rejoice this day that you sent John the Baptist, and then you sent your son Jesus to John for baptism. We realize how inadequate John must have felt as he realized he was to baptize Jesus, your son, our Savior. But empowered by you, he did baptize Jesus, who showed us that baptism is a gift from you. And that through our baptism, we become more and more and more like Jesus. As we remember our baptism today, we're going to put our hands on our heads. As we remember that we trust you, Jesus, as our Savior. We remember we were baptized in the name of our Father and into you, Jesus, our Savior and our Holy Spirit. We died with you, Jesus, so we might live again as your disciple in your name. We remember that as we were baptized, we were no longer our own, but we belong to you forever. 
Lord Jesus, as this water pours in the font, would you pour out your glorious, holy, loving spirit on us and in us. We thank you, Jesus, for your promise that you are the one who will baptize us with your Holy Spirit. Thank you that when we die with you in baptism, we be old sinful self and relinquish our wills to your will. As we come out of the water, we receive your new life, your resurrection life, Jesus, and we welcome your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Ruach HaKodesh. We wait with expectant hearts for your presence in us through Jesus. Thank you that where Jesus is, we know our Father and our Holy Spirit are with us. Holy Spirit that was yours and now becomes our spirit that lives in us. That your spirit that enlivens us with your life, Jesus. We praise you, mighty God, for Jesus and your Holy Spirit. We pray also now for our whole world. As we submit ourselves again in remembering baptism, we are compelled to confess the need for your spirit and your life, Jesus, for all those in our world, for our country, for our community, for all those that don't know that they are sinful and those that don't know that they need your forgiveness. We pray this day. For Lord, there are many that don't seem to understand. They are called to be under your kingship. That Jesus is to be their Lord and Savior and we are not to be our own. We ask your forgiveness, Lord, for all the times when we rebelled against being yours and thought we could do this life on our own. I thank you for your forgiveness and your love. And I thank you, Lord, for your help that as we continue to walk in your grace, remembering our baptisms, remembering that your Holy Spirit is indeed poured in us and on us, you would help us as we navigate life uh, in a very broken and stirred up world. You would help us be peacemakers, not just peacekeepers. You would help us to know the joy that in you, Christ Jesus, we are not our own and we don't have to face any of the things in our world by ourselves. We face them. We go through each day with you. And you will empower us to live faithfully. To live and speak your good news. The kingdom of God is at hand. And you will help those, Lord, that trust in you. That are the change of government in this, our country. We pray for your help. We pray and thank you for the leadership of chaplains. We pray and thank you for people who stopped and prayed for your help in the midst of the turmoil. We continue to ask that people will stop and pray as these next days go forward. And we would see a rebirth of faith. Life lived through Jesus, in and through Jesus, we pray. Lord, we pray this day for people that are on our prayer list. There are people awaiting test results. There are people celebrating birthdays like Sandy. We thank you for her birthday this day. Lord, we thank you for your healing grace that continues to uh, be part of the grace and goodness you offer us. Thank you for your healing grace on, on Sandy, on her arm and on her knee. Lord, we thank you for being with folks that are still experiencing much sadness in their lives. And we lift those folks to you. We lift those, Lord, that are experiencing COVID, be it a family member that has it or they themselves. Lord, we ask for your grace and your mercy 
for those that are struggling with that or with family members that have that. Or we lifted or getting the vaccinations and we thank you for those vaccines. We thank you for those that are able to receive them, those that will soon receive them. And Lord, we ask that, that we could be, have a more measure of patience as we wait for all people to have these vaccines and we might find there is um, more life, more hope, and people can be back at work and back with family members again. Lord, it's been a long, long, long year. And we thank you that you have um, great us with us, for us, and in us. We pray this, Lord, in your wondrous name, as we pray together in and through Christ, the prayer we call our Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but to deliver evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our offering plate is out there on the little table. So we will um, remember today the, the wondrous gifts given that come in so many different ways. And we are thankful for your, for the wonderful, wonderful faithfulness of this congregation. We can be thankful together. And we're thankful for God because God continues to bless. And as God blesses, we're able to keep giving and be and be faithful ourselves. So let us praise God and thank him for these gifts by using our song for the life you have given and our prayer. say together what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And in person, Debbie is on Zoom. And... And um, our, lay, our lay leader for this is our elder, Jenny um, Grubb, who is also clerk of session. And I am here on Zoom and in drive-in. So this should be exciting, but we're all going to enter into it, it together. So um, I believe I start. Let us join in this service. As in one body, we have many parts, and each part has its own function. So all of us together with Christ are one and we belong to, to each other. If your gift is to hear God's word, if your gift is service, if your gift is the heart of a teacher, 
Let preachers preach with conviction and givers give freely. Let all thy officers work diligently for the people. Let us not lack for enthusiasm, but be ardent in spirit. Praise the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in suffering, supporting one another and welcoming all. Many of you, as were baptized into Christ, you were clothed yourselves, you have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is one body and one spirit, just as we were called to the one hope of our calling. Though we have different gifts, together we are involved in a ministry of reconciliation led by the risen Christ. We pray for and work to be his church, making disciples in the world. We call men and women to come to faith in Jesus, so that in the end, every knee shall bow and every tongue come confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The Lord in sacrament, ruling elders or deacons. In ordination and installation, we recognize these special ministries, remembering that our Lord Jesus said, whoever among you wants to be great, you must become the servant of all. And if anyone wants to be first among you, you must be the slave of all people. Just as the Son of Man came to not be served, served, but to serve and to, and to give his life, his life to set others free. Representing the church in session of Jarrettstown Presbyterian Church, we now ordain and install Debbie Bush to active service to the office of elder. Debbie, God has called you to be the voice of the church to serve Jesus Christ in a special way as elder in this congregation. Please answer these constitutional questions. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? I do. Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? I do. Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe? And, and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? I do and I will. Will you fulfill your office in obedience to Jesus Christ under authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions. I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word spirit? I will. Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus, love your neighbors and work for the reconciliation of the world? I will. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? I do. Will you seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? I will. Will you be a faithful elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, Will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? I will. Do we, members of the church, accept Debbie Bush as elder, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. We do. Do we agree to encourage her to respect her decision and to follow as she guides us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? We do. we do. As we prepare to pray, I get ready to pray over Debbie. I'm going to invite, um, I think Joe is with her. Is that correct? He, yes, he is. I want to invite Joe to come and put his hands on Debbie. You could put them on her head, Joe. That would be even awesomer. And we're going to, if we're elders in the church, we're going to raise our hands up. And this is our virtual prayer but also a real prayer. So, you know, we're not right there with her, but our hands are here reaching out 
on Debbie's head and shoulders and on the shoulders of Joe. So um, let us our hands up on her now and let us pray. Holy and wonderful God, you are not a virtual God. You are a real God. You are God of heaven and earth and you are God in this moment. You are God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And as we pray with real hands on Debbie's head by her son-in-law, Elder Joe, and our hands, the elders of this church, raised because we know that as we raise them, they are all on Debbie. Because you make it so, oh God. Because by your graciousness, you call us it seems out of nothing. You call us to, to baptism. You call us to follow your son, Jesus. You call us and you give us your Holy Spirit in and through Jesus. These things we can't see, yet we know that you do. We know because we see the effect, like the Holy Spirit coming down from heaven. They couldn't see the Spirit, but they saw something like a dove. Holy, thank you for calling Debbie to this time. I thank you for this virtual and, and real and, and these two services joined together because God, this is just a small microcosm of how you work in our world. Some things we can see, some things we can't. So in this time, Lord, we invite that you would pour even more of your Holy Spirit on Debbie. We invite that you would give her the gifts she needs and the skills necessary because you are the one who um, makes us able to do your work. So I thank you for enabling her as she takes on this gift of being an elder, this, this uh, service work to serve your church. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that, that you didn't come to serve, but to be served, but to serve. So Lord, I thank you for helping Debbie helping her to be a servant like you, a servant leader. I thank you this day as we believe for the gifts you give her in this ordination and that you've called her and set her apart. We also will pray at this time for her installation. And we thank you for the other elders she is going to be installed alongside. She'll be working with the other elders of this church, Lord. And we thank you for each one. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of the congregation that you work through as you call people to service. We thank you that, that you have given them energy and anism to be in this work, the work of your church. We thank you that as you install her, you will also lead the way for what and who and how, the details of what this will entail. We bless you. We bless you for your church, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit this day. And we thank you, Father God, that, that you would make us like your son and even invite us into the work of your son, Jesus. He leads us in the work of this church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we do pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God, our Father, thank you for choosing me to be your servant. Thank you for your promises to sustain and empower me with your strength with, and love by your Holy Spirit in the work and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray all together. God of grace, who called us to a common ministry as a holy priesthood, ambassadors of Christ, trusting us with the message of reconciliation. Give us courage and discipline to follow where your servants rightly lead, lead us that together we may declare your wonderful deed and show your love to the world through jesus the lord of all amen debbie you are now an elder in the church and installed to active service whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Welcome to this ministry as serving as elder. 
Thank Everyone you. said, welcome. welcome. <laughs> Thank you all. Oh, we're so glad. Thank you. And this has been an exciting uh, way. First time it's ever been done this way of the church. <laughs> we are learning new things every week. Let I'm glad us, I could be a part of history. Yes, isn't it? You are. It is an exciting day. Okay. As we close this worship, let us sing our closing hymn. The tune will sound very familiar because we sang it with the first hymn. Number 482, Baptized in Water. Out this day just I want you to remember that you are beloved that God is pleased with you that you become through the baptism in Jesus children of God would you share that would you be those children would you share that love wherever you go this week in the name of the Father the beloved Son and Holy Spirit Amen and amen. Bless you all.